Good morning, folks. We'll start with an article about radiation and solar storms and aviation. It's a bit scary by itself before you remember that our atmosphere is collapsing and the magnetic shield is fading fast. Confused by what I just said? You haven't been doing your homework. Start googling these things. The videos will be at the top of the search results. You need to catch up fast. We're kicking into another gear here. But first, Take a moment to appreciate Cassini's shot from a polar loop, the North Pole hexagon of Saturn, one of the prettiest sights in our system. The CIOC has a few new blog posts and one of them describes the solar wind and even CME reactions of comets. For website members who need a good way to understand what I was discussing last night about CMEs being giant racing magnetic fields, this will help shape what I was describing and is my top recommendation today. NASA's rainfall measurement missions have been giving us some of the best new animations on the net. Best of all, they're based on real data, not sims. Had a bit of focus on Indian flooding extending well after the cyclone. And folks, those storms that were stuck there are still not moving. Same system, churning on the Bay of Bengal. Down under, we have some rain in the southern quarter from east to west, but you still gotta think the wildfires are the top concern near Sydney. In Europe, this looks like one big low pressure system, but it's actually split into two troughs with the first moving on and the next one about to crest on to the UK. The two tropical storms that were heading for Japan skirted the coast. They are shooting northeast apart and away. Coming to the Americas, the power low is here in Canada, with a strong clockwise driving high immediately to the south. They reinforce the surface wind where they meet in the middle and from Texas up that line across the border. We have the potential for significant weather as temperature, pressure, moisture, and electric potential of the two air masses work out their differences in short order above our heads. On the heels of the double gamma burst from the 24th, we've had another from Pisces this morning. Solar wind telemetry shows no interplanetary shocks, the speed is almost nada, and the electron flux is clean. High energy proton flux the only thing rising and it's still minor now. NOAA has amended their Enlil spiral to show impacts beginning tonight. They've added one of the X flares we had yesterday. The first was reported in the news, around 800 UTC. The second was around 1500, an X2. Now the X1 in the morning will likely have no effect on our planet, but there is a definitive halo eruption associated with the X2 midday. We have both SOHOs showing me a halo, and we have Cactus confirming. Major magnetic storm watch for the weekend and into next week, but no damage is expected as of now. The other top story is in the quakes. Corona hole power was weaker yesterday morning when I saw you, but jumped up middle of the day, not more than two hours before the 7.1 earthquake in Japan. Gave us a little deja vu, huh? I mean that literally. A little tsunami did hit the coastline. Luckily there was no damage. Power is moderate to the corona holes, but seems to hit higher power at least once a day. Got the space weather still coming, and planetary conjunction shown the last few days will begin soon. Shots of our star to close? Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.